Hey, this is Alexi Lawless. There is nobody in U.S. soccer that is more important than the Cooligans. Yeah, baby, we're back! Hello. Come on. This is, oh, uh, I mean, what an Always honor. Always an honor. Every single time, yeah. it's an honor. There's people yelling at yeah. him already. There's going to be a lot of that. We're going to, this is the first. Uh, like the zoo. This, yeah. is, <laughs> this is the first uh, interview that we're going to have here on Podcast Row at the at the United Soccer Coaches Convention that will be heckled. We will. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There yeah. will be heckling. And it may be, it may be uh, people that are involved in the sport behind, you know, uh, like front offices. It may be former players. Yeah. Everyone. Everyone oh, seems a, to want to get at this man. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? you love him. He's the voice you hear at the beginning every, uh, the beginning of every episode of really? the Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, you're our drop. Aww. You're our drop. Ladies and gentlemen, oh my God, he probably doesn't even remember what he said. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, put your hands together, even if you're driving. I normally say unless you're driving, but even if you're driving, pull over and put your hands together for the one, the only, Alexi Lalas, yeah, everybody. Thank you. That's wow. What a That's a hell of an introduction. Man, oh man. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah, you said you, one time on our show, you say? said, there's nobody more important to American soccer than the Cooligans. Well, I mean, that's that's factual. All right? Thank that's, you. That's, that's, okay. that's the antithesis of fake news. It's the, <laughs> it's the realest news you can possibly put out there. I'm glad you still stand by yeah. your statement. <laughs> Absolutely. In true yes. Alexi Lalas it's fashion. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. What it's- did I say? I like it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you? We're good. How's it Come going? Look at this, huh? uh, Alexi. Yes, so, sir. Uh, how uh, uh, we're happy to have you on. Uh, we have to immediately start with the with the obvious. Mm-hmm. I think for a lot of people, right? Yeah. You were. Uh, we are all excited that the Columbus Crew are officially oh, staying. Oh, really? You're gonna we start, start right, right here, baby. Right in, we're so excited. They're officially they're staying in Columbus. Yes. Forever. Right. Nothing will ever <laughs> rip them away from from that fan base. For now, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Easy. Right. So, uh, what what do you want to say to some of the people? Uh, or maybe you've already said it, but say it to us. Because you were one of the few folks that were like, hey, this is just, you know, rip off the Band-Aid. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you know, make just make this happen. You're, you're, you're hurting them even more. Right. Uh, and uh, and look, what, look what ended up happening. Yeah, I, I will readily admit that I did not anticipate uh, an ownership group stepping up to the extent that one has here uh, and finding a way where everybody is happy. Because ultimately, this is what people wanted from the beginning. I didn't think that that was going to happen. I'm not going to apologize for having that opinion. <laughs> All right. Even if, by the way, you guys, you guys have been around long enough. We're in the business of having opinions. We're in the Hell business yeah. of saying stuff. It, it, it might it might be true not, not not true it might turn out to be true it might not turn out to be true but that's not a reason to apologize I'm not apologizing to Columbus or to the Columbus crew folks for doubting that somebody was going to come up and uh, make this thing into something very very special and an ownership group to uh, to to arise that's a that's a good thing I'm happy believe me this is this this has worked out the, the in the ideal way one that we talked about now. The Save the Crew folks, congratulations. Wonderful. Use it. Uh, use it as a touchstone. Use it for what it is, which is a seminal and a wonderful moment that you can uh, that you can build from. And by all accounts, the way things are shaping up there with the stadium and with the rejuvenation here and with local ownership, all that kind of stuff, this is what they have wanted all along. But yeah. I didn't think that was going to happen. And, well, let me, and let me defend I'll, Alexi real quick. You don't have okay. to defend me. No, no, no. Here's, here's, here's he my point. It. Uh, you don't need it because the guy <laughs> does a good job of doing it himself. A man who wears a suit this nice does not need someone who dresses like I do to defend him. But <laughs> this, I will this say this. fox attire, man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not bad. Send me out on my own. Fox got good money. Well, I'm wearing fox attire. <laughs> so well, here's the thing. Okay. You said rip off the Band-Aid. Yep. You said. But why is that bad, though? No, hold on. But okay. you said if you're going to do it, do it now. Right. Don't make these poor fans have right. to suffer through this longer because you assumed that over the hill was going to be negative news. Yeah. I would have thought the same thing. Why would you make someone have hope right. if there is no hope? Turns out there was, and that's there where was. you were wrong. <laughs> but I don't think what you said was, I hope Columbus loses their team. No. You never said no. that. Look, but they blamed you because you're they, the only one yeah. who had anything to say that wasn't save the girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, 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 no, but it's not like I came out and said, I can't can't wait till Columbus moves. Exactly. No, I came out and said, you know, those Save the Crew people, God, what a bunch of assholes <laughs> yeah. they are. You Wouldn't know? it be great if it's, they lost? You no, never said of that. course. Nobody's so, ever. Why would on record? Because then, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the happiest you could possibly be, 1 being boo, 
How happy are you that Columbus got to keep their team? Like a two and a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this he, is why they hate you. Look at this. So, oh, so, and people come think, on. And people I love think he's not optimistic. No, yeah. I, I, I have been to Columbus many times. I guarantee next time I go there, there will be people that will uh, let let their feelings be known as to how they feel about me relative to the Columbus situation. But the the, uh, the most important thing, regardless if you like me or don't, it doesn't really matter. You got yourself a team. And you got yourself a team in a different way right now. That's a good thing. It's, a, it's not just a good thing for Columbus and for MLS. It's a good thing for soccer. And this is going to be a story that's going to be told for, I believe, a long time to come as it should. Because it's, it, it's a lot of work. And, uh, and I'm very, very happy for you. I think it is a watershed moment in American soccer. Okay. Because I don't know that this would have happened had this happened five years ago to a different team. A lot of things had to be in place in order for Columbus to be able to uh, keep their team. But because it did, the next time a team has the threat of moving, I think the fans will be emboldened to uh, try to support their team and try to keep it the way Columbus did because of that success. Got it. Got it. And we have Austin. Yeah. You know, and Austin's going gonna, Austin's gonna to get a team. And that is, regardless of how this all went down, and we can certainly, you know, talk about the drama and, and it will be part of the story and part of the, the folklore when this, when this Austin team comes, it's, it's a market that MLS wants to be in. And yeah. it's a market I think that's going to be very, very good, as is Columbus and continue to be, uh, not continue to be what it was, because it's got to be better. Columbus has got to be better. And I think with this new ownership and with this new direction, it will be better. And that's ultimately what we all want. You can l- love or hate me or anywhere in between between that but ultimately i don't care as long as you are happy and you are involved in soccer yeah and i'm excited to see what that what columbus can do with a downtown stadium and where the fans and the supporters are being hamstrung by the owner which there was a lot of rumors and stuff going on so it's exciting i'm just excited about all the sweet business metrics that are going to be coming out of the new downtown (laughs) stadium oh yeah (laughs) let's see them spreadsheets boys (laughs) so alexi look so much has changed in american soccer over the last few months, over the last year or so, Atlanta, MLS Cup, 73,000 fans. Yep. Rewind a little bit. We missed the World Cup as a nation. <laughs> we did. There's so much up and You'll down. You'll say, yeah. We're in, we're in an MLS draft right now. We're here for the NWSL draft as well. The combine just ended. Where do you think the state of American soccer is today? And where do you think the state of American club soccer is? Okay, so I think the state of American soccer continues to be one of uh, self-analyst, uh, self-analyzation, I guess you will. Um, looking, and much more so than we have done in the past, as to what we are, what we want to be. I think you know, technology has made it a whole lot easier to communicate and different platforms out there. And everybody's got a microphone, everybody's got a bullhorn, sure. and everybody's got a, a platform. That's not it's necessarily about... I know, but it's... Listen, uh, everybody here, listen to us. Yeah. We know what we're talking about. But, but I think <laughs> we're, we're good at this, guys. We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to figure out what we are as a soccer-playing nation and what we are as a soccer culture, an emerging soccer culture, and one that's very different, very diverse. And there's... I take great pride in that. But it also makes it incredibly challenging and difficult. You know, I was talking to someone earlier. If I just grab five people from around here and ask them what beautiful soccer is, I'm going to get five different answers. Yeah. And that's that's okay. But that means we're going to be heading in five different directions if we try to do something. And no matter what direction we go, four of those other ones aren't going to be happy. And that's that's hard to do when you're trying to get an entire culture and one that is as unique and diverse as ours going in one direction and I'm not sure we'll ever be going in one particular direction uh, going forward but I think this has been good I think this has been a good period of analysis I think there's questions whether it's you guys or anybody else out there asking questions even if it's if it's done you know with wit actually better when it's done with wit and comedy that's why I, lo- that's why I love you guys no, <laughs> that's why I love you guys because sometimes we take ourselves too seriously yeah. and yeah. I, I get I get a little crap every once in a while because I say it's it's just soccer it's it's, it's it pales in comparison to you know, yeah, yeah. friendship and health yeah. and security and family and friends and all these different things. But it's, it is a thread that, that binds us in many ways. And we find a lot of those things within the context of, uh, of soccer. But it is just a sport. And we, 
it comes from a, a good place, this place of passion, because we all want good things to happen. We want our culture and we want our country to, to grow and it, and it will grow, but it's going to grow in a very different and unique way. And that's not something to fear, actually. And you, and so speaking of American soccer and, and a, a landmark moment uh, with Christian Pulisic, uh, obviously signing with Chelsea, uh, this is one of the biggest uh, transfer fees ever in, uh, in soccer history not, and not just American soccer history. What does, I, I saw, I heard you talking about it on your podcast uh, and it it some people feel I, I think from when I saw your response I I, I think there was a, a, a maybe missing the fact that maybe there's a possibility that we overpaid or he was overpaid for Christian Bruce say doesn't seem to be on the world market that value the the value of the American player because he is American right. we know he's good right but the, the, the he, him getting more the, the transfer fee going up because of him being American and you know whatever that whatever that means for this market and everything, is that significant enough uh, to, for that to, to validate that kind of transfer the, fee? The question when this news hit was, it wasn't uh, you know is Chris, where's Christian Pulisic going to fit in on the eleven? Yes, that eventually came a part of the yes, conversation. Yes, yes. But the first question was, why is Chelsea paying this amount of money? Different sides, people agreed this was this was money well spent. People agreed, why are they possibly overpaying it? The money is a huge, huge part of the story. And that's why it's so important because, yes, it's a seminal moment for American soccer and for an American soccer player, but it's a seminal moment because of the sheer size of the money. This is big no matter what, if you're American or not. This is big for a human being out there. But don't think for a second that if Christian Pulisic was the exact same player coming from, still coming from Dortmund, let's say, and he was Greek or something like that, that he would be, that they would pay $72 million for him. And in a strange way, the opposite effect has happened because for many, many years, being American and, and your Americanness at times worked against you. And in this case, it worked for him. Yeah. And they recognize they have to continue to mine this American soccer market that's out there. And they're smart in doing it as this global super brand. I'm talking about Chelsea here and having a, a Christian Pulisic on their roster and a guy that you're not going to spend that amount of money if he's not going to play. A, a guy that's going to play. Exactly. That, that is yeah. a good thing. It's a good thing for Chelsea. It's a good thing for American soccer. It's certainly a good thing for Christian Pulisic. <laughs> yeah. uh, Whether Sari knew the transfer was going through or not, $72 million means you start. $73 yep. million means you're starting, yes. bro. Yeah. You're playing. Exactly. Let me ask you this. How much, how many millions of that 73 would you say the American market is accounted for? This is good business. I think. Him as a player yeah. versus the market. So I think if you as a player... Number. He would have uh, fetched just a regular player, a regular player. I don't know. But uh, <laughs> so I think, let's say, twenty three point seven million dollars of it. Wow. Okay. Let's say so a third of it. Let's just say it's a third. Still of it. a big deal. What's it say? If that, if that, that's a pretty if big that deal. Happens. That's still the most. For an American. No, no matter what, he would have still been the most because yeah. he's an undeniable talent that everybody recognizes and that every team in the world, notwithstanding the fact that he's not starting right now, would want to have on their team. All the big teams in the world would love to have a Christian Pulisic. So then by that account, hiring an Alexi Lalas to run out there for one game. <laughs> an American get, legend. At least, a, at least a buck fifty, buck seventy five. <laughs> I mean, at least, right? <laughs> you could get a couple milli. That, that would be gonna have to run though. Could you imagine two comedians, one of which is so fat he dies during the game? Ooh. You know how much money we could get on Chelsea? It's like a, a soccer snuff film or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm not coming out of the locker room at halftime. You know that's not happening. Why are you watching your games at on Pornhub.com? Yeah. <laughs> Why are you rubbing your hands together during this game? What do you what do you think is happening? There's so many talks now about the combine going away. Yeah. Philadelphia just sold all of their <laughs> right. all of their picks away for I think three bags of chips, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what do you think is happening? Do you think do you think the, the combine and or the draft is important anymore? Do you think yeah. it has a place in American soccer? I think soccer? the draft does. I think the combine doesn't. Because you know, even back in the day, uh, we, we talked about the combine. We said, look, if you are coming to the combine and you're seeing these players for the first time, then you haven't done your job. Right. Because it should not be a surprise. It should confirm what you already know. Uh, 
And so I don't think the combine needs to continue. The draft is still there, and we're still going to have it, – it's, it's not going to have the relevancy that it's had in the past yeah. and certainly doesn't have the pizzazz and the sexiness that it may have had uh, right. in the past. But you're still going to have players that come through. I still think that the, the, the – especially the college route, and I know not all the players are, are, are college uh, routed players, but I still think the college route is going to have some appeal and still can produce some players going forward. But it, it certainly has become less and less relevant, and that's certainly the way that it's con- going to continue to go. If there's any scenario – where uh, a, a young player has the opportunity to go to an academy or, or like why would they play college soccer? I, I'm, and I'm not saying that to say sure, sure, anything sure. negative about college soccer, but I, I'm, I'm not familiar with right. why, why that's the best choice. So we have, we have over the last, let's say, 20 years really focused on making better soccer players. And I think one of the things that has been a byproduct of that is we have um, – not abandoned, but I think we have shirked our responsibility for recognizing that we're not just responsible for producing better soccer players, but we're responsible for producing better young men. In this case, it's uh, men's soccer. And these are young men. Is that true? Yeah. Look, <laughs> all right. Look, let's be honest. You got 11 guys on the field. Right. All right. I don't care if 11 of them are terrible human beings as no, long as they're not the don't. worst <laughs> that's fine as long as they're not like criminal Here's i mean even problem. a little bit Here's the, know, <laughs> i want as a fan you want you want a parade man you as want a chips. fan but you're thinking of it as a fan all right but you are a human and you in this case are a resident of the united states right yeah okay <laughs> all right all right okay i don't care if my paperwork is in crayon it says i live here and i belong here but to to acquire those 11 soccer players that yeah. we can all readily admit are good okay yes. You're only seeing the tip of the iceberg now. So those are the 11 that made it. Behind those 11, let's say, are another 300 that we tried and didn't make it. Right. Those now 289 players now are then thrown thrown back into society without with very little useful tools and skills. Okay, because the soccer has come and gone. At the very least, if you go the college path. Yes, it may hurt you in terms of the development of soccer, and I get that. But when that dump happens, you have gone into a situation where you have had a unique experience. You have learned lessons. All of those different things that at times, if you are, if you are fortunate enough to go to college, you, you gain. And those lessons that you learn, I think that there is a value to having that. Now, that, does that mean that soccer is not uh, detrimental at times to players? No. And that's a big problem right now. But I think that they're, if, if the NCAA wanted to do some things, they could do some things to get the best of both worlds, where you do have that path and you do have that educational component. And I'm not just talking about numbers. And, yeah, and, and yeah, so yeah, I'm I, talking I about the education saying. of going right. and the social interaction. We, we talk so much about the 90 minutes. But we forget about the 22 and a half hours of the day. True. And I think we do have a responsibility. That's, that's just who I am. You I are just think, who you are, I but think I very, believe we do have a responsibility. I think it's very anti Alexi Lalas' <laughs> tone to suggest that we should uh, coordinate everything to the guys who aren't going to make it. Right? Am I not right? <laughs> No, actually, uh, and, and watching your Twitter feed, I think you would love to have this, in that I am actually thinking about the masses, all right? I am actually thinking about providing a safety net for people, all right? People, and this safety net would be for these 289 yeah, for players 289 that players. didn't make it as, as professional <laughs> soccer players, to give them tools to function as human beings, because as important as a, uh, a, a professional career is, and as defining as it might be for myself or my friend back here, Jermaine Jones, <laughs> All right. yeah, just it's still a small here. period of your life. <laughs> yeah. and you got, as, uh, I was listening to Jermaine talk earlier about the transition into coaching. Once your career, career is done kicking the ball, it's a, it's a strange transition, and it takes, it takes time. You, you have to change mentally. You have to change physically, about, all the different things. How about so, like a rehabilitation house for the kids <laughs> when they make it? A halfway house for all these kids. <laughs> you, get, you get to become a better person. But then, you know, I don't care if you're a jerk. You well, know? Look, I mean, look, I understand that. I care about the future People of America. Like you're a jerk. And I, wait, who? People, what have you heard? What have you heard? I mean, <laughs> not the ones taking selfies with you. God, look, <laughs> you, you can do what you, you want to do, but I, I care about the future of America. All right. And obviously right. you don't, but I care about the future of America. We got 300 that's, million. But that's just me. That's we just got, me. We got 300 million. I could, we could lose 298. All right. We could lose 298 people. Well, there are. I, this is the one thing I would say about college uh, and, and the players that come out of college and that are successful. Right. We've seen Jack right. Harrison. Right. We've seen Julian Gressel. Right. Uh, one year. 
One year. One year. There's one, look. Oh wow! <laughs> Coming in hot. Come on. Wow. A but, cup of coffee. But so one, you think it's an aberration, an uh, anomaly? It's, a cup of it's, it's an anomaly. Okay. But, but one thing I find, and we've interviewed both of them on the show, and we do find that the the players that have you know have had that experience just in college or a little bit educated a little bit more carry themselves oh, a little really? bit differently. You don't think? You, know? yeah. <laughs> you don't think they're maybe a little bit more mature uh, in the way that they carry themselves? You don't think that they maybe that socialization and that, you know, everything from responsibility from homework or no. getting your heart broken or getting in <laughs> Alexi- trouble or all Alexis that kind of stuff. You homework, do not. Can I just, just say something? <laughs> Alexi, I have two... I have two bachelor's degrees in three years. Really? So everything you just said is wrong. <laughs> you don't I, think it's made you better? I mean, no. I mean, a it may be, but it brought my level up to barely above a hobo who follows you on. <laughs> Why don't you care about working on yourself? Why don't you care that's about being a, the best version of yourself that you can be? <laughs> I ain't trying. You out here with abs in your 40s. I don't know how old you are. I ain't trying. Let him, let him be the good looking one. I'm the face of this franchise. Yeah, there you me. go. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Alexi Lawless, thank you so much. Thank you for guys. I love what us. you do. And uh, I just want to say to, to you guys and more importantly uh, to the Columbus crew folks out there, I love you. Congratulations. I'm so happy for you going <laughs> forward. Uh, I'm not sorry, yeah. <laughs> but I'm happy for no you. No reason to be. You guys are great. You guys are always Hell thank. Hell no. fine. Uh, yeah, it's always an honor when you're on. <laughs> Alexi Thanks, Lala. guys. Thank you Thanks, so much. Guys. What's up? It's the world champion, Judah Friedlander, and you're watching the Cooligans. Why? Because you're cool. This is what winners look like right here, man. I mean, you're looking at us. Right now with my legs, I just juggled the ball 80,000 times. <laughs> you missed it. Yeah. He's been playing keepy-uppy since I met him. Yep. Look faster, guys. <laughs> Go Team USA. <laughs>